Welcome. The goal of this module is to guide you through how to configure a guest SSID for Aerohive routers at branch sites. For this next demonstration, for my branch network wireless and routing network policy, I will add a simple guest SSID with a captive web portal to have guests agree to an acceptable use policy. To start, I will select my branch network's network policy and click OK. Next to SSIDs, I will click Choose. I will then click New to create a new SSID. I will call this SSID profile Guest Wi-Fi Branch. And I'll name the SSID Guest Wi-Fi. I am using a different SSID profile name than the SSID because I am already using the Guest Wi-Fi SSID profile name in my corporate headquarters wireless only network policy. To use the same Guest Wi-Fi SSID in my wireless and routing network policy, I have to use a different SSID profile name but I can keep the SSID as Guest Wi-Fi. For ease of use in this demonstration, I will set the access security of this SSID to Open Access. I will set the access security of this SSID to Open. Optionally, you can use WPA2 Personal or Private PSK Access Security options if you want to provide secure guest access. Before granting access to the network, I want to ensure that guests agree to an acceptable use policy. To do this, I will check the box to enable Captive Web Portal. Now I can save the SSID. I will ensure my Corp Wi-Fi branch and my Guest Wi-Fi branch SSIDs are selected, and I'll click OK. Next, under the Authentication column, you can see a CWP link. I will click that to select a captive web portal. In the Choose CWP dialog, I will select the same captive web portal called CWP Use Policy that I previously defined for my corporate guest SSID. And now I will click OK. Now it's time to define the user access policies for guests. To do this, under the User Profile column, I will click Add Remove. In the Choose User Profile dialog, I will create a new user profile. Here I will create a simple user profile called Branch Guests. that will assign guests to their own VLAN and IP subnet. For this user profile, I will use an attribute number value of 8. This attribute number value has to be unique in a network policy, and I usually make it the same as the VLAN that will be assigned in this user profile. Now I can define the network settings for guests. I can do that by clicking plus. I will name the network guest 192.168.8.0 For each network and VLAN defined, Hive Manager will automatically configure the router interfaces. VLAN 1 by default is used for the management network, so the guest networks should use another VLAN. I will enter 8 for the guest VLAN. Next, I will need to specify a DNS service. I will select the default DNS service, which is named the same as my Hive name. For the network type, I will specify guest use. A guest use network type will duplicate a single subnet for all branch sites. The router will perform network address translation for all guest traffic leaving the router to the internet. In addition, 
any devices on a guest use subnet will not be permitted to access the corporate VPN. Under Subnetworks, I will modify the guest use network to be 192.168.8.0/24. And I will exclude the first 10 IP addresses and the last 10 IP addresses in the IP pool in case I want to use some static IP addresses. The router's DHCP server service is enabled by default for guest use networks. Now I will save the network. Note that the user firewall settings defined in a user profile do not apply to routers. Instead, we can configure the router firewall in the network policy for a user-based stateful firewall policy. Now I will save the user profile. In Choose User Profiles, I will select my new Branch Guest User Profile and save. Now you can see that when a station connects to the Guest Wi-Fi SSID, they will be required to enter an acceptable use policy in a captive web portal, and they will be assigned to the Branch Guest User Profile, which will assign a subnet of 192.168.8.0.24. At this point, you can save and update the configuration of your router or add additional settings. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. You can now proceed to the next video in the Getting Started series.